Thank you for being here. My name is Marilyn Pearson Adams, and I am one of your education ambassadors. And I have the distinct honor and privilege this morning of introducing um, our speaker, where we are going to learn to build and nurture a $6 million customer base. Our speaker this morning is Marguerite Crispillo. Marguerite Crispillo has helped more than 3,500 buyers and sellers in her 24-plus year career as a top producer. Along a parallel path, she also has coached and mentored salespeople to find their own success and life balance. Her training classes and boot camps focus on what is happening right here and right now in the marketplace. Please help me give a great big Florida Realtor welcome to Marguerite. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, everybody. I'm super honored to be here. Uh, I do have to say, when I walked in here this morning and saw this huge room and it was empty, I was feeling a little bit of uh, uh, nervousness, <laughs> a little bit of heart palpitations. I'm like, oh my goodness, am I going to speak to an empty room? Have any of you guys felt that way when you're getting ready to do a presentation or talk to somebody? And we always think that everybody else has it all figured out, right? So I'm super honored to be here. It is very humid here. <laughs> I'm from Northern California, and we get it hot there, too, but not quite as humid. So probably not the best hair day, right? Everything else seems to kind of melt. You guys are used to it. But anyway, this is the very first day of this conference, right? How's it going so far? You've been here like a whole 20 minutes. You got it all figured out, all the education done, right? You're ready for an extraordinary couple days. Well, I've been to lots of these conferences over the years, and I have to tell you, this one has been... Uh, already pretty exciting, like walking through. You guys are all having your elections and stuff going on too. So I'm seeing all the like vote buttons and that. I felt a little bit like I was in uh, high school when we were running the the student governing board type stuff. But anyway, I'm thrilled to be here. So today we're going to talk a little bit about how to build and nurture a six million dollar business or more. How many of you would like to have a database worth that? Yes, there we go. Right. So I want to give you a scenario. This is an email that I got back in 2016. It says, hi, Marguerite. You were our realtor when we bought our home in Pendron about 17 years ago. Wow, how time flies. I continue to think about you because of those damn annoying monthly newsletters. Don't stop sending them. I read every one. Well, life is what it is, and it's time to sell my mom's house. Are you interested? I look very much forward to talking with you, Mark and Diana. Now, the beauty of this is not only was this a $980,000 home, but we did a neighbor's meet and greet on Friday night, and we double-ended it, earning us approximately $60,000 in commissions after 17 years. And so many people get super caught up in right-now business, and they're not necessarily paying attention to what it takes to continue to nurture a business year after year. Like, how many of you actually got into this business to have a career, right? A long-term career versus just trying to do one quick deal and get out. (laughs) That's the big difference. So here's the truth, you guys. You don't need more leads. Like, everyone seems to get caught up in this whole thing about, I need leads, I need leads, I need more, more leads, more, more, more. And the truth is, that's not really what you need. Because I can promise you, if I walked in here today and dumped a 100 leads on your desk, most of you guys would burn through the majority of them, and you probably would only get one client out of it if you're lucky. Because we're not really paying attention to the long-term effects of these people that we're working with and building the relationships that are so important. We're churning and burning that business a bit, right? And so here's the reality. A lot of us are so focused on trying to create these social media things. Like, right, we're all trying to figure out how can I get more business off of Facebook? How can I reach out and get some stuff off of Instagram or Twitter or all that? And we're all trying to find all these people to do business with. When the reality is they're right there. We're trying to add friends and we're not paying attention to them. Would you agree? And so what can we do differently when it comes to helping attract people and working with them more? I encourage all of you guys to take and do a mental note right now and write down the last six transactions that you've done over the last few months, however long that's been. 
write down mentally in your mind who those people are. And where did they actually come from? Next to each name, write down where they came from. Were they a personal friend? Were they a past client? Were they a sphere of influence? Were they somebody that you knew? Were they advertising? You guys, I have to tell you, and I hope not to offend any of the vendors are here, but we're the biggest suckers on the planet when it comes to buying stuff, right? You want to make more sales? Go find salespeople. And they're all, if you just close one more deal, you can get, you can, it's worth it, right? So you go spend $5,000 on something and they're like, if you just close one deal, it's worth it. So we're buying all kinds of stuff and we're getting so caught up in trying to get more business that we're not paying attention to the people that are right in front of us. So again, if you look at those last six transactions that you did, where did each one of them come from? Are you paying attention to who those people are? I'll tell you one of the most valuable things you own is your database. I'm going to show you why that's important in just a moment. Now, there are two types of real estate agents out there. I was doing some training earlier this year. I added a couple agents to my team. And I had two agents that joined my team. I'll call one Janelle and one her name was Carrie. And a big reason, they were brand new. They were trying to figure out how they were going to get business and what they were going to do. And, the, and Carrie walked in and she's like, I want to have it all figured out first. She's like, Give me, I need to understand the contracts. I need to know how all this works. I want to make sure I'm not going to get sued. I want to have everything set up. I want to make sure my marketing's perfect. My business cards are perfect. I need to understand everything, please. Janelle walked in the next day and says, I have a client. Now what? <laughs> The truth is, Janelle, within 30 days, had two clients in contract. Carrie, a year later, had nobody. So are you paying attention to those relationships? What was the difference between Janelle and Carrie? Janelle went out, reached out to everybody she knew. She called her family. She called her friends. She made connections, talked to people that she knew. Next thing you know, she had a client. Carrie was trying to figure out where to go find people. She was trying to figure out technology, trying to figure out how to use, I don't know, KV Core, Boomtown, Zillow, Facebook. She was spending all this time trying to figure out technology, and she wasn't spending any time looking up from that computer and looking at all of your beautiful faces and figuring out where she could get business from. Can any of you guys relate to that? Yeah, it's big, right? So here's my favorite phrase, and I don't know where I stole it from. I like to claim it myself. But it says, you get paid in direct proportion to your ability to figure stuff out. So you walk into a store, and you get that cashier, and you say, hey, I'm looking for, I don't know, cotton balls. And she says, I don't know where they are. And she turns around and goes and helps someone else. You walk up to another one and they go, oh, yeah, hang on. Let me take you over to aisle seven. Here's where they're at. Here's all the different kinds. You can choose all the different ones you want. Can I help you with anything else? Who do you think is going to rise to management level? Who do you think is going to be successful? And so as real estate agents, for a lot of us, we're sitting around trying to figure out what we can do and how we can do it and who we can talk to. We're not doing the activities we need to do every single day to build and nurture those relationships. So I want to show you Linda Buckmaster. This is Linda Buckmaster. That's me on the left after getting thrown into the pool. <laughs> we were at a client event I had. But Linda Buckmaster, back in 1997, bought a $50,000 HUD home from me. She had come off of an ad. I was a relatively new agent, so I was doing a little bit of advertising, which we all need to do. She bought a $50,000 HUD home for me. She was a grandma raising her grandchildren, and she had never owned a home before, and she just wanted to own a home where she could raise her grandkids and create a stable environment for them. She bought that home back in 1997, again, for $50,000. I think my commission approximately before broker splits, et cetera, was about $1,500, right? However, Linda has referred seven people to me who have referred people, who have referred people, who have referred people. She's closed, I'm sorry, she closed seven transactions, has referred nine people. And I'm going to show you at the end what that really looks like for her. So how do you get here? How do you get referrals like that? How do you get people that come back to you 
over and over and over again. Well, I want to explain to you one of the big challenges as real estate agents we have and we see is most of us are reactive. Again, we're sitting around waiting for the phone to ring. We're sitting around looking for that magic button that can push it and says, oh, here's all the leads you ever wanted. We're looking for that situation where we don't really have to work, right? We don't necessarily have to put in the time and the energy and the resources to get people to actually work with us. We're all sitting around waiting for the phone to ring. Some of us got into the market when it was super hot, and that's really all you had to do. You had to sit in the office, wait for the phone to ring. You got a sign in the yard, phone rings. We didn't put in any effort to really be proactive. How can you go out and get business? What are you doing on a daily basis to create activities that generate business for you? What does that look like? Well, a lot of us actually got into the real estate industry because we didn't want a job, right? <laughs> Anyone do that? You had this eight to five job. You're like, I don't want to sit at a job desk all day. I don't want to do this. I'm going to go into sales where everybody makes a million dollars. We all drive Mercedes, <laughs> right? If you watch Facebook, that's true, right? Every agent in Facebook has sold 100 homes a year. Every lender has never had a loan denied or late, right? We've all got like this perfect image on Facebook. And the, for a lot of people, they got into real estate because they bought or sold a home through a real estate agent. All they thought the real estate agent did was put a sign in the yard, and then at the closing table, they saw that big fat commission. They're like, she didn't do anything. They're like, well, masters make it look easy, don't they? So on a daily basis, what activities are you doing to be proactive in your business? You know, for a lot of us, we've become firefighters, not fire prevention specialists, right? We're, we come in to the office. First thing we do is we go through our email. We see what all the problems are. Then the phone starts ringing, and then our day has just gone to heck in a handbasket. Or you can be the type of agent who sets that stuff aside and starts focusing on getting business first. Anybody feel like you're on this roller coaster in real estate, right? Like one day you're all excited and, oh, my goodness, you got a bunch of stuff in contract. And then you're focusing all your energy on that stuff. And next thing you know, those deals close and you're out of business and you're starting all over again. You don't have any consistency to your real estate business right now. And are you paying attention to getting business in each of those areas? So let's talk a little bit about what a typical business looks like. Every business consists of three marketing areas. This is every business, you guys, whether you're in real estate or whether you're selling widgets. But every single business has three areas that you are getting business from. And you guys are welcome to take pictures. I'm also going to give you a link at the end where you can get all of the slides. You feel free to take pictures, but you'll get all the slides if you just go to the link. And so on those three areas of business, it comes from advertising, business connections, meaning attorneys, affiliates, lenders, your heat and air guy, uh, the plumber, your financial advisors, your CPAs. It's coming from those areas and your database. Now let's most importantly talk about conversion. Because this, to me, is one of the most important aspects, is conversion. So from advertising, if you were to actually track 100 leads that came from advertising, what you would see is that the average conversion is 100 to 1. Meaning for every 100 leads you get, you will close one piece of business. Now a lot of people say, oh, I get better results than that. The truth is a lot of us are not writing down all the leads. You get a lead and they go, oh, I'm not interested, and you don't count that, right? You get a lead and they say, oh, I have an agent, and you don't count that. But every single lead that comes from your marketing counts as a lead. It's kind of like baseball. Now, I have this is a horrible analogy because I don't understand sports. But baseball, what is a good batting average? 300. What does that actually mean? They've been up to bat 10 times, and three times they actually hit it, right? The rest of the times, they didn't. They, they missed. Something went wrong. Now, they could blame the pitcher. They could blame the people in the stands. They could blame whatever. But the truth is, they had an opportunity 10 times. And out of those 10 times, three of them actually turned into 
and at base. And that's a really good batting average, right? What do those, somebody who has a 300 batting average make a year? Millions. Ridiculous amount. Now, I have the next question to ask you. That person that's making millions of dollars a year with a 300 batting average, how much time do you think they spend practicing? How much time do you think the average realtor spends practicing? Zero. How many of you have said, oh, there's an opportunity to do role playing, and you go, oh, no, no, I'm way better with clients. <laughs> I, I'm uncomfortable role playing with you. I'm much better when I'm in front of clients, right? And I, I'm not so sure about that. So the, ad, the average conversion rate on advertising, advertising is 100 to 1. Yet you know what, you guys? You're spending millions of dollars in advertising when the business is right in front of your face. You're spending millions of dollars on things like Zillow and Realtor.com and all these. And I'm not criticizing any of them. There's great opportunities there. Don't get me wrong. But the fact is, you're spending millions and millions of dollars on these advertising sources when the conversion is 100 to 1. Now, let's talk about business connections. Again, CPAs, accountants, financial advisors. If you're part of a B&I group or a LATIP group or something like that, some sort of networking, your chamber of commerce, if you're actively working it and you get referrals from those people, the conversion rate is 10 to 1. Now, let's talk about my favorite one, <laughs> database. If you look at your database and you get three referrals from your database, your conversion is three to one. One piece of business from three. How many of you guys like those odds better? However, we're spending all this money on the worst odds ever. It's kind of like going into the casino and picking the absolute worst odds. And they say, we're going to take a hundred bucks and give you back one. Are you in? <laughs> like, yes, right? We're taking the absolute worst odds when we go in there. And that's crazy to me. I don't understand it. And when people, I've talked to people who've been 20, 30 years in the business and don't have a database. They go, oh, yeah, I'm going to get around to that one of these days. <laughs> oh, well, all those people just call me. Have any of you guys ever sent something out and found out that your neighbor bought a house from someone else? <laughs> or your sister-in-law? <laughs> right? Or a past client. You see they just sold their house and bought another house. They're like, why didn't you use me? Well, I completely forgot you were in business. I haven't heard from you in 15 years, right? And so we all know that the fortune is in the follow-up, do we not? So why are you not doing it? What are some of the reasons that you guys would say you're not following up, you're not putting in work to your database? Anyone got anything? Chasing business? Right. So chase, we're so busy chasing business that we're not paying attention to the people that have already used us. You guys, you want to know why we have the reputation we have? Because guess what? We got this great client. We're so excited to help them. We become their bestie over the next 30 to 45 days. We're literally talking to them, texting them, emailing them. We're having conversations with them every single day for 30 to 45 days. Are we not? Then guess what? They go to the signing where the biggest number on the closing statement next to the loan amount is your commission, and many of you are not even going to your signings, which I think is a tragedy. And then guess what? You get your commission check the next day, and we're out. We break up with them. We don't talk to them again. And we wonder that why we, they think we have commission breath. We do. We're not paying attention at all. It's like, hey, we love you for now. <laughs> but guess what? As soon as I get paid, you're never going to hear from me again. And so the biggest challenge that I see with people following up is they're trying to complicate it. How many of you have spent the last 12 years making sure your database is perfect and everything is accurate so that you can actually do a mail out? Wait, I got to categorize them first. Right? Like, I, I can't send anything because what if something screwed up? Right? I don't know what to do. So this is what I have done for the last 24 years of my career. I send out a simple letter about me and my life. 
This particular letter was one of my most popular. It was about my grandfather, who has since passed away, and it was called The Hunt for the Perfect Reuben Sandwich. <laughs> my grandfather loved Reuben sandwiches, so we used to go out to lunch every week. We had a lunch date every week, and our goal would be to find the best Reuben sandwich. So I sent this letter out to my database, and I received back 40 calls, text messages, emails about where the perfect Reuben sandwich was. Now, you guys all are in a situation where you said you don't like to do outbound activities, make outbound calls. How would you like to have those phone calls? Marguerite, we're calling to tell you where the best Reuben sandwich is. And guess what those conversations would entail, would it go to? Gosh, how's the real estate market? What's going on? Marguerite, my neighbor just put a for sale sign in the yard. I'd love to know how much their house is selling for. I'm thinking about selling mine. You want inbound calls? How can you create that environment so those people call? You guys, I learned cold calling. When I first got in the business, everyone said, you have to cold call or you won't make it. And I said, okay. So I went to a class on cold calling and sat there with about 20 other agents. I made my first few calls and I needed to excuse myself because I wanted to throw up. <laughs> I said, this is not gonna work for me. If this is what is required in the real estate industry, I'm not going to make it. And so I went home and I said, I'm going to figure out another way to get people to call me. Can I figure out another way that I can generate business and create and deepen those relationships so that I can stay in the real estate industry? And you guys, here's the beauty that I love about this industry overall is everyone can create their very own version of success. You might be somebody who just wants to close five or six transactions a year because that's more than enough to help out your family, that's enough to go on vacation, that's enough to support your retirement, or whatever that is. Or you might be somebody who's got the crazy in their head that has to do 100 plus deals a year, which I did at one point, and then I said, that is nuts. <laughs> Built big teams, did a ton, a ton of production. And now I'm back to where, you know what, I kind of like just going out and hanging out with people like you guys. How can I show you what you can do in your business? So are you currently mailing to your database? 99% of agents aren't. They're not sending out one thing to their database. They haven't even set up a database. So I challenge all of you, if you get nothing else today from me or anyone else in this conference, today is the day to set up your database. It does not matter which one you use. Don't get caught up in, like, doesn't that drive you crazy in the Facebook groups? Which CRM is the best? The best CRM is the one you'll use. It doesn't matter. I don't care if it's index cards. Any of you guys remember Rolodexes? Come on, 52 years married. <laughs> you remember the Rolodex, right? And Harvey Mackey wrote a great book, and he said, the most valuable thing that I own is my data, my Rolodex. And so I encourage you today to go out and set up your database, number one. And so here's what I did when they told me I couldn't be successful unless I cold called. I went home and I pulled out my Christmas list. And I pulled out that list and I put all those people in my database, all my family, all my friends, everybody I knew. And for some of you who are getting caught up in, I don't want to mail to this person, I don't want to mail, I send my letter to everybody. In fact, if you email me your address, I'll add you, <laughs> right? I send it to everybody. I don't discriminate for any reason. I've even sent it out to people who've bought and sold houses with other people after they rep I represented them. For example, here's a big reason why I do this. And I send it out first class mail. These are all the questions people will ask. I send it out first class mail so that I get the returns and then when I get those returns and I see that they've moved, I look them up on the MLS to see who they moved with. <laughs> but I recently had a situation with a gal named Jury. I had represented Jury three times on real estate deals. And then I got her mail back. And I saw she went and bought a house with somebody else. And so I messaged her, messaged her. And I said, Jury, how are things? I said, you know, I was sad because I saw that you recently bought and sold the home with another real estate agent. I just wanted to know if I did something to hurt you, offend you, or upset you. Because we all need to improve ourselves, right? 
We need to get better. She goes, oh my gosh, no. I have a new boyfriend. (laughs) And his sister is a real estate agent. And we had to use her. And it was awful. (laughs) And I'll never cheat on you again. (laughs) And so... I was able to improve that relationship, right? But a lot of us don't want to make that call because we're uncomfortable. We don't want to improve that situation. So I mailed my database every single month. Now, here's where you guys are going to start complicating it in our little squirrel brains. Oh, I can't write. I don't know what to send. I'm not sure what to do. I will tell you that over 24 years, it has been a variety of different things. In the beginning, I used to use like that uh, automatic postcard system that would send out recipe cards or, you know, school calendars or something like that. I did that for a bit. And then I decided, oh, well, I'll send some sort of newsletter. And so then I tried to do that whole newsletter thing. And it ended up where it became 12 pages and super complicated because that's how we are, right? We all got to make it better. We can't just trust somebody to do what they say do. And so had these 12-page newsletters with all this information. My husband, who's back in the far corner there, will tell you countless times we were sitting on the living room floor stuffing and folding newsletters to all hours of the night, right? Sending out newsletters. And then somebody said, why don't you just keep it simple and write a little letter about yourself? And this has been the most successful thing that I have done literally in my career. Because people are nosy, first of all. So if they are going to read mail, are they more likely to read something like this or are they more likely to read your real estate statistics? They don't really care about real estate statistics. I hate to tell you that, but they don't care. They don't care until it's time to sell. What they do love is staying connected and being a part of your life. Remember we said in those first 30 to 45 days we became besties with them? We got to know them intimately. We got to know their family, their kids. We got to know their frustrations, their fears. And so they love to learn a little bit about us. These are very generic, you guys. These are not like getting deep into the weeds. I have written twice about real estate in 24 years. Once when the market went crazy up back in 2006. And then once when it went really bad in 2010. But do you think that if you build these relationships and you build these connections, do you think you can survive any market? You guys, I've been through every market in 24 years that you can imagine. I've been to the great markets, the not so great, the really bad, the really, really, really bad. You guys went through it too. Florida and California, we ran very parallel markets. But if any of you have survived that market, you survived not because of advertising. You survived because you created and developed relationships. Yes, you have a question? Yeah, I've written about all kinds of things. A lot of it has ran parallel to my life, um, but I've written about my kids. I've written about uh, neighborhood stuff. I've written about things. I've written about Facebook and how I was so confused by it when it first came out, right? I literally write about little just things. Now, sometimes I'll interject a little tiny bit of real estate stuff in there, but on average, I don't. And let me tell you why I don't, because many people, again, are reading these because they're the connection. Like, think about when you guys get Christmas cards at at Christmas, right? We don't get them as much as we used to. But we kind of, all we're doing is opening it to see who it's from. Like, how many of you don't even read the card, right? You just want to see who it's from to see who actually remembered you. And then you get the letter from Aunt Sally. And Aunt Sally has the good gossip, right? In her letter, she's talking about all the cousins, right? And what somebody did and who's in jail and who's not and who bought a business and who lost their business. She's telling about all that stuff. Now, I do say I always keep it positive. I don't really write about negative things, but I have had a couple situations where I have written about things that were very personal to my life. I had a sister-in-law who died of breast cancer, so I did write about that. Um, and if you do not write well, it does not have to be complicated, If you don't write well and you don't want to send a letter of the heart about yourself, come up with something else to send. What I don't want you guys to get caught up in is I don't want to mail anything because I don't know what to mail. You will have plenty of vendors here today that will give you something to mail. Right? There's no doubt in my mind. The difference between this and what the other stuff is is that this is more personal. And I get people that send me letters and calls and visits all the time that say, I love getting your letters. You had a quick question? Yeah. 
Like a blog? Yeah, so there, these go out in a couple different ways. I send them out snail mail, okay? Again, with first-class stamps, don't send them bulk because bulk will not come back to you, just so you know. It's worth it to send the extra money. So I send out about 2,100 letters a month. It costs me a little over $1,000. Or I could spend that 1000 bucks on Zillow. What do you think has a better return? <laughs> right? For most of you, the average agent has about 200 people in their database. It's going to cost you about 100 bucks a month to send it out. I also email it. Here's why. Number one, I snail mail it so that I get the returns. I email it so I get the returns. Because that helps me clean up your database. All you guys are waiting to clean up your database, and you're not making the calls to find out the information. This is a quick, easy way. You guys send out a postcard today, you'll get about 10% of them back. If you haven't mailed your database ever, you might get more. And you'll get them back, and that will help you clean up your database. So I've written, ran the gamut about all that kinds of stuff. How many of you have a home office that looks like a hoarder lives there? <laughs> Oh, is it only me? <laughs> okay. So I wrote about my home office. And I said, my home office looks like a hoarder lives there. I'm embarrassed, but I'm going to ask you to hold me accountable. It's time I got it cleaned up. How many of you have too much stuff in too little space? By the way, if you need help with getting more space, I can help you with that. <laughs> right? So that was a super popular letter, too. And people are like, oh, but I have a storage container and all this kind of stuff. Right? So I send it out via email, snail mail, and yes, it is. You guys can see lots of my examples of my letters by going to marguerite.chrisfillo.com and click on blog, and you'll see a lot of, I post them there every month. Someone else had a quick question over there? Yeah. I don't always have a call to action. I simply at the bottom say, hey, by the way, like here it says, send me an email or connect with me on Facebook. I want to know what the restaurant is, but I don't always. I try to put something in there where they're going to want to call me or want to connect with me. But you guys, we're in a world as connected as we are via social media and the Internet, we're, but we're still craving that connection. Like people were so excited to call me and tell me about the Reuben sandwiches. And we're all craving that connection. Like, we're all on FaceTime and Facebook doing stuff, but we're not talking face-to-face. -face. We're not looking at people's eyes and saying, hey, I feel you. I want to do something like you. I'm excited to know you. Have any of you guys had that call from or found out from a client they didn't call you because they thought you were too busy? That's a rough one, isn't it? They're like, oh, you're too busy. I didn't want to call you and bother you. You're like, this is what I do for a living. <laughs> And so we're not reaching out ourselves. We're waiting for them to call us. We're not reaching out and connecting. I use a form called the Greatness Tracker that I learned from the core coaching. And the requirement is I have to make 10 outbound calls a day. I actually have to talk to 10 people a day, which sounds easier than it is. And I can't even tell you, I just made a call the other day. And I called a gal that I hadn't talked to in about five years. Her name was Jenny. Now, Jenny has bought and sold a couple of houses through me. But her and her husband have lived in this house for a long time. I'm like, Jenny, I just was thinking about you. And I was wondering how you're doing. She goes, I cannot believe you called. I literally last night was talking to my husband and saying, it's time for us to move. Is that bizarre? And we think, oh, that stuff doesn't happen. That only happens to you. But that stuff happens all the time. Are you making those calls? Are you reaching out to people? You guys, it doesn't have to be... One of the big things that people talk about, call everybody and ask for referrals. So my question to you is, if I called you today, Doug, and I said, Hi, Doug, this is Marguerite, and I'm calling to see if you know anybody who wants to buy or sell a home. You might take my call the first time because you recognize my number. What happens the second time? They're not calling you. They're not taking your call. Your phone number is blocked. But again, we had a great relationship. I helped you guys buy your house. I spent 45 days talking to you. How are things with the family? How's the kids? What's going on? And nine times out of ten, those conversations turn into, wow, Marguerite, yeah, what's going on with you? How's the real estate business? What's happening? So this is another example. This is the Heinemans. I sold these guys their house in 2002. If you look closely, she was pregnant with their first child. 
They bought a three-bedroom, two-bath house. A three-bedroom, one-bath, I'm sorry. They now had four children. They showed up at one of my events. They had four children now. And she goes, Marguerite, I can't believe we haven't made it to your event in all these years. We've been wanting to come, but we've been a little busy. (laughs) (laughs) And she said, but guess what? That one bathroom is not cutting it with all these kids anymore. It's time for us to move up. That transaction alone ended up being they had to sell their home, buy another, and the referrals that came out of it. People get busy. And so how do you stay connected from the, from the time that you're sending these letters? And again, how many of you guys are willing to go and get your database set up today? I'm writing all your names down, and I'm going to call you. <laughs> we just took a picture. We have it documented. We're going to follow up with you on it and get your database set up. And these guys came to one of my client events, and it was time for them to buy another house. But the reason that they showed up at that event was because for 24 years, I've been sending something to my database every month. So I know I've beat that into a pulp, so now we're going to talk about what else I do. Yes, sir. Uh, The addresses are labels, but I will tell you what I do. About once every three or four months, I do what I call trash the letters. I go through them myself because I've had assistants help me with this. I don't always have them, but sometimes I do. I literally go through them all, and if I see your name, I might say, you know, hi there, uh, hi Doug, right? It's been a while since I've talked to you, let's do lunch soon. Or hey, I just saw on Facebook you have a new grandbaby, congratulations. I'll write something on it, but I also go through it because we don't look at our database all the time, we already know that, right? And as you're going through your database, you'll start to remember things. You'll say, oh my goodness, they got divorced, I need to take his name off, (laughs) or her name. Or somebody died, right? Or something happened to them. Or something where I need to make changes in my database. I don't see that all the time. Because here's what happens when you guys start to clean up your database. You start with A, and you get five in, and the phone rings. (laughs) So you made it to A, B, (laughs) right? And you didn't clean up or change anything in there. Or you get to the first letter on the alphabet, and you're like, oh, I'm going to go see what they've done on Facebook. And you go on Facebook to see if their information is accurate, and then two hours later, you're still on Facebook. So you're not cleaning up your database. So this forces you to do it in some way or some capacity. And so the important part is going in there and and making sure that you're making those changes. So to answer your question, I do not hand address them, because to be honest, if you're sending them every month, they want to see them. They know their name. They know your logo on the outside of your envelope. They open them. Some people don't, but those people are going to get deleted. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) But, yes. I'm going to go into that right now. Okay? So, yes, sir. Oh, my gosh. That's my husband back there. He's calling me out. So, (laughs) So, yes, this is actually a funny story. So, again, because we're all OCD and we're all trying to be perfect, we don't want to have any mistakes. I'm the same way. I want to make sure everything's perfect. And so one month, my guy who was helping me with my newsletters messed up on the Excel spreadsheet to merge them. So it was your name and your address. So all my, le- all my letters were off one. It was the best mistake ever. <laughs> because everybody was calling me, Marguerite, I got your letter and it's so weird. It's my address, but it has this other person's name on it. I got to clean up my database more than I ever have. It was the best thing ever. Another one that I had is where I've frequently had misspelled words, and I'm kind of like a grammar freak, so it really bothers me when a word is out of place or it's misspelled or something. And there might be spelling errors in here, so you all are free to call me out. So the fact is, is it bothers me. And so somebody called me one month and said, Hey, Marguerite, you know, I know how you're kind of a grammar, you know, not seeing freak about that. She goes, I wanted to point out there's a mistake in there. I go, oh my gosh, you won. (laughs) They're like, what? I go, you won the contest. We put it there intentionally to see who would find it. (laughs) (laughs) So you got to have a little humor about this, right? Like you have to have a little bit of fun with it. But again, please, you guys do not get caught up in it being perfect because I promise you, if you wait till it's perfect, it's never going to happen. You're not going to do it. It's progress, not perfection, okay? And it has not held me back at all by it not being correct, right? So client events, 
you wanted to know. So the letters were not enough. I was not getting enough out of it. And I am a social creature by nature, as most of us in real estate are. I realize we have some people that are a little introverted, but the reality is hold client events. So now some people go, oh, I don't have a budget to do that. I don't have the money to do that. Well, stop spending money on Zillow. And I'm sorry if Zillow is in the room. We love you, but we don't. So the fact is, you could have client events. I've done things from all the gamut, all kinds of events, from holiday parties, summer parties, smaller dinner parties. In fact, just last Saturday, I had my 55th birthday party. My birthday is actually in November, just in case you guys are curious. But I wanted to have a summer party because no one comes to your house on Thanksgiving for a birthday party. And I don't want pumpkin pie for my birthday. So we have, we live out in the country. We have five acres. I said, I'm going to have a summer party. We hired a huge band. We made a huge client event out of it. And I have since already received nine referrals from that birthday party a week ago. We had about 250 people show up. It was a blast. People were like, I don't have the budget to do that. Guess what? You have lots of people who will help sponsor and pay for your events. Any lenders in here co-op? No, none of you. Do we not have any lenders here? All real estate agents. So your lenders can co-op and help pay for some advertising. You guys might have other vendors. We've had people like heat and air, uh, plumbing people, uh, home warranty companies. We've had all kinds of vendors. As a matter of fact, we had a restaurant in town that was a new restaurant, and they were trying to build up their business. And I said, hey, would you guys come and help out with the food? They're like, sure. We simply had to pay for the food. They paid for the, the um, service people, and we were able to get our event taken care of. Okay. Now, again, they don't have to be huge events. A lot of you are already having panic attacks thinking about holding a client event. <laughs> right? You're like, oh, my gosh, what would I do with a client event? We've done all kinds of events from, again, small dinner parties. One of my favorite, and you guys can do this one today. It's called Take Your Realtor to Lunch Day. You go through your database and you find a client who works in an office ideally or works in an environment where they have coworkers, and you figure out when their birthday is and you say, I would love to take you and a few of your coworkers to lunch. I do this every year with several of my clients. I have one gal who works at the government offices in Sacramento. And last year she brought her birthdays in November. Last year she brought nine coworkers with her to lunch. Out of that, I got three clients. Because two things. First of all, the lunch cost me, I don't know. I said, you pick a place. Usually people are very respectful. They don't pick the most expensive place. They'll pick some place close to where they work, a burger joint or a barbecue place or something like that, right? So I get there, and guess how she introduces me? This is my real estate agent, Marguerite, and she's buying us lunch today. I had my lender go with me, help pay half the bill, and the entire lunch conversation was about real estate. Hey, Marguerite, I live over there in Antelope. What's going on in there? Marguerite, I live in Citrus Heights. What's happening in that market? I've been thinking about buying a home, but, you know, my credit's kind of jacked. I'm not sure what to do, right? We all know how to help those people, do we not? How many of you could go out today and find somebody who could go to lunch with you that could also bring some coworkers. And it wouldn't cost you hardly anything. You're going to lunch anyway. So could you bring a few of these people with you and start communicating with them and start getting business from them? Guess what? Out of those three people that bought houses, the commissions totaled almost $30,000. But I also got six more people I could add to my database who remember the fortune is in the follow-up, now have the ability to follow up with them month after month after month. Somebody asked about my call to action. All my letters, by the way, do have my logo and my contact information on them. And then I typically put my business card in them as well. But the letter itself is mostly about me and my life. And there's a lot of different subjects and topics. I mean, you guys have funny stuff happen to you every day, don't you? <laughs> I don't know about you. Uh, hold on, you got a question over here? Yes. I'll just say, hey, can I get your address so I can stay in contact with you? It's that simple. Hey, by the way, can I get your phone number? Let me grab your email so I can make sure that you get information from me. 
you just bought them lunch. Most people are not going to say, no, I'm not willing to give that to you. You can say, great, you want to pay for lunch? <laughs> right? <laughs> like, I, I mean, I think we're getting too complicated many times in how we ask. We're so concerned and nervous. I'll give you an example. Any of you guys have like young daughters that are like in that 12 year old age? There's a, yeah, there's a, a, a clothing store. Now I forgot the name of it. What? Justice. Thank you. So I take my niece, I don't have daughters, so I take my niece into Justice one day and she's going crazy, buying a bunch of clothes for her birthday. We get up to the register and the first thing they ask, can I get your phone number, please? I said, huh, have you guys been to a store and they do that? I asked the lady, I said, I'm curious, how many people actually give you their phone number? She goes like 95% of them. Hardly anybody. We are non-confrontational human beings. So I don't want to embarrass myself and say, no, I'm not going to give that to you. Now, there will be people who do that. That's okay. All right. No worries. And But usually people don't also say, oh, but I don't want to get your marketing stuff. But I don't really send marketing stuff, right? I send stuff about me and my life. And by the way, if you have questions about real estate, I'm here and available to help you. There's lots of things. People say, well, I don't have country property. I can't do a party like that. Have any of you guys here in this area do like music in the park? Like some of your local communities have music in the park or they do movies in the park. You can piggyback on those. I have one of my very good friends who's a real estate agent in my market. He saw this. He goes, Marguerite, I don't have, I don't have any property and I, I don't know what to do about the park. The next weekend he calls me and goes, oh my goodness, I just piggybacked on music in the park. He went out, he set up a couple blankets, he let all his people know, hey, I've got some reserved seating <laughs> at the music in the park. He set up a little pop-up tent, he took out like some cheese and, and, and fruit plates and some waters and, and drinks, and he just, he had like 30 people come and sit there and do enjoy music in the park with him. Of course, he had his name on the banner and he had stuff up there. He got a ton of business out of it, right? So get creative. Many of you are just thinking, oh my goodness, I can't do that because I don't have this. Remember that quote I said back there? You get paid in direct proportion to your ability to figure stuff out. So what can you figure out a way to do today? Housewarming parties, we've all heard about that. And people are like, oh, I don't want to feel like I'm selling anybody. You are salespeople. (laughs) Just want to let you know. If you got into real estate and you don't want to sell, you should probably find another career. We are salespeople. You can call yourself whatever you want, consultant, uh, whatever. I don't know what you want to call yourself. But the reality is this is what we do. We sell homes. This is how we pay for our families. It's how we take care of and enjoy the things that we do. We sell real estate. We get to help people with the biggest financial decision they will make in their lifetime many times. That's what we get to do. We get to help them through this process. We get to guide them through this process. But we have to stop getting in our own way. We have to stop being worried about what people do and what people say. Here's my question. So you're afraid to call your Aunt Sally because you don't want to be uncomfortable and tell her you sell real estate. So instead, you'd rather that Aunt Sally goes to the guy Bob down the street who has a horrible reputation, does not take care of his clients, and has horrible reviews, all because you were afraid to call your Aunt Sally and tell her you sell real estate. That's the problem that we're facing. We're not spending that time letting people know what we do. Again, it doesn't have to be a pitch fest when you call. Hi, Aunt Sally, I'm calling to see if you know anybody who wants to buy or sell real estate. It can be, hey, Aunt Sally, how are things going in your life? What's new with you? How many of you haven't even called your Aunt Sally in 15 years? (laughs) And Aunt Sally dies and you feel bad. You never called her. So are you making those proactive calls? Here's some other examples. Happy hours is fantastic. Outdoor movie night, Christmas party, Oktoberfest, charity events, summer carnivals are things we've done. This is a perfect example of somebody who did a happy hour. Ernestine Wilson, I met her at a conference a couple years ago that I was speaking at. She left that day. She went through, any of you guys have a bag of gift cards that you've forgotten about or you haven't used? 
<laughs> They're like, well, I got all these gift cards and I forget to use them. She went through her bag and she found a $200 gift card. I'm like, well, I want your gift card bag. But she found a $200 gift card bag. I mean, a gift card in her bag to like a Ruth Chris or something like that. She called six of her friends and said, hey, I have this gift card. I'd love to have happy hour with you guys. Will you come and do happy hour with me? Six of her girlfriends showed up at happy hour. Four of them bought and sold a house with her or referred somebody. Over $40,000 in commissions. Or she could have forgotten about that $200 gift card, done nothing with it, (laughs) and not ended up in business. So my point in the majority of this is that what are you doing on a daily basis, activity-wise, to reach out to the people that you care about most? What are you doing to stay connected with them and stay engaged with them? You know, you guys have it so easy now because you have Facebook and social media. You can figure a lot of this stuff out. You can stalk people, right? Back in the old days, I sound like an old person, we didn't have social media. We had to old-fashioned pick up the phone. And now people are not picking up the phone. You're not reaching out. You're not doing what you need to do. You guys remember, we are in a relationship business. Real estate, first and foremost, is a relationship business. It's connecting with people on a daily basis. It's looking up from your phone. You know, I was talking earlier to uh, the education ambassador, and she said something that I thought was interesting. She said, you know, for some of us who are a little bit older, when people would, now we all have these eye watches, and I had to actually, like, set my watch off because it has notifications, And it distracts me. And she said, yeah, she goes, it's funny because when I talk to people and they're constantly looking at their watch and I'm thinking in my head, oh, I'm boring them, (laughs) right? Or, oh, they're done with me because that's kind of a clue usually when people start looking at their watch, they're kind of done with you. And she goes, and I realized it's notifications now. But the truth is, how many of you have been frustrated with people or your teenagers because they never look up? We're so focused on looking down here, we're not paying attention to the most valuable people who are right in front of us. And so how do you create some of these wow moments with people? How do you go the extra mile? Many of you are doing that, but you're not doing it proactively. You're not doing it strategically. The majority of us as real estate agents are doing business by accident. We got lucky that somebody randomly thought of us, that maybe they got something or they saw our name or somehow they connected with us, but we're not being proactive about it. We're not being strategic about it. And so what are you doing on a daily basis to make these wow experiences? What does the real estate process look like? I don't know about you, but they say that we're buying and selling a house rates right up there with death and divorce on the stress meter. People get whacked out in the middle of a real estate deal, do they not? I mean, we should be, we should have a psych degree for sure. And so how can you make that process smoother? How can you make sure that people are taken care of and that they understand the process? And for a lot of us, again, we're closing that deal and we're breaking up with them. And so what are some little things that you can do? For example, one of the things that we do is we do a moving day kit at the close of escrow. A lot of you guys give some sort of a closing gift. But here's the problem. So Bob and Sally buy a $300,000 home from you and you go give them a $50 gift basket. Bob and Sally refer Lori and Dan and Lori and Dan buy $800,000 house and you go get them a $500 gift card. And they talk. And they're like, we got a $50 basket. They got a $500 gift card. So are you creating consistency in your business the same? So we do a moving day kit that has all the stuff you can't find when you're moving because everything is boxed up. Whether you buy a $800,000 house or a $2 million house, when you're trying to move and there is nothing in the house, everything's in boxes, you need a hammer, you need waters, you need toilet paper, you need a wine opener for sure. That's number one in there. I like how she says wine, (laughs) right? 
And so you don't have all those things. So we put them all in a moving day kit, and that's what we give them at the close of escrow. What things are you doing to systematize and organize your business so that the same things happen every single time with every single client? Now, obviously, there's some little changes. People might have kids, not have kids, different, might have dogs. They might have a variety of different things. You can make little changes. But are you doing something that's the same every time, or are you doing something completely reactive? You're rushing around the day of the closing trying to figure out what kind of closing gift you should get them. You don't know what to get them, right? Are you communicating with them? You know what the number one complaint of real estate agents is? Lack of communication. Because here's what happens in the typical real estate process. You start working with them. They're all excited. They're trying to find a home, right? They might get beat out a couple times, so they get a little frustrated. You finally get them into contract, and they're all, woohoo! they're all excited. And then a couple days later, panic sets in. What did I just do? Your clients are freaking out, stressed out. I'm not sure if this is the one. I don't know if I should do this or not do this. What if my loan gets denied? Maybe I'm not ready. Maybe it's too much commitment. <laughs> they get all the inspections and they panic because there's a plug in the kitchen that doesn't work. It's not a GFI plug. Right? <laughs> they're going through all this. They're getting panicked. And then finally about halfway, they're like, okay, I guess I'm going to do this. It's all good. And then guess what? For the next 10 days, it gets really quiet. They don't hear from us at all because we've got our inspections done. We're done. We're moving on. So now the lender is doing their thing and they're not hearing from anybody. And what do you think is going through their head? They're freaking out. Like if any of you guys go to the doctor and they do a blood test, and they said, we'll call you if there's anything wrong. So you're sitting there, tick, 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 tick. Well, maybe they forgot about me. Did, is there something wrong? Am I going to die tomorrow? Like what? I don't know what's going on. You're trying to call the officer. Like we told you we'd call you if there was a problem. Has any of you had that happen? That's exactly what our clients are going through in the real estate process. Like, I think there should be a law that we all have to buy or sell a house every two years so we can go through what our clients go through. Because you want to have the worst client ever, have it be another real estate agent. <laughs> They're impossible, right? And so are you calling them and connecting with them during this time? This is where we're not really stepping up to the plate like we should. We're not doing the things that we need to do to make sure that clients are feeling good about the process. And so we're on this vicious cycle all the time of trying to build new business and not taking care of the people that are right in front of us. We're constantly chasing like that little hamster on the wheel, running around, running around, running around, and we're not doing what we need to do. So what does it look like to build a lifetime business? I mean, I hope I got a few more years, but I'm 24 years in. It'll be my 25th anniversary in December for getting my real estate license. And I don't know that when I first got into real estate, I looked at it as I would be here 25 years from now. But I have to tell you, I absolutely love real estate and cannot imagine what else I would do. I've been asked that many times. You guys, I barely graduated high school. I did get a PhD, a public high school diploma, right? <laughs> But I barely graduated by the skin of my teeth. My report card said I talked too much, and it worked out for me, right? But I barely graduated from high school. I didn't have a college degree. I didn't have the education that a lot of people have. And I've been able to make extraordinary amount of money in real estate and have made connections that have lasted a lifetime. I'm now selling houses to people's children and almost grandkids, <laughs> but I'm selling houses to people's children, people that I've been able to help through one of the toughest things that they go through in life, in real estate. What else would I do? I actually had to think through that question. I thought, what else would I do? I don't even know what else I could possibly go do if I decided not to do real estate. Maybe an event planner. I don't know. I, I, I really don't know because we get to participate in such an amazing piece of people's lives. And I think that sometimes we forget that. I think that sometimes we forget how important and vital our role is in helping guide, this, guide people through this process. And so I don't think when I first started, when people say, what would you tell yourself when you first started if you could talk to yourself back then? I would say probably I think I did a pretty good job. Could I do better? Of course. 
But I encourage all of you to look at this as a lifetime career. Do you plan on doing this? Look at every client as a lifetime client, not a one time out the door. Are you looking at them as a lifetime client? Do you plan to be here when they sell their house 5, 10, 20 years from now? Do you plan to be here when their kids or grandkids are selling a house? People said, well, what are you, are you going to retire? I don't know. What does retirement look like? What would I do? I can't imagine. So we're in this amazing industry. And if you really do it right, you will reap the rewards. What do those look like? You guys remember me telling you about Linda Buckmaster. Linda Buckmaster bought and sold seven homes through me. She referred 65 people, not personally. She referred nine people who referred people who referred people who referred people. So all of you guys talk about multi-level marketing. There you go. (laughs) Right? Eight levels deep, over $300,000 in commissions. Just from Linda, who bought a $50,000 home. So if you take that... And you take that and divide it up and you divide it by times my database of 2,100 people. My database is worth almost $7 million. It's actually worth a lot more than that by now. But if you take one client and figure out how much they're worth, many of you guys are not even paying attention to that one client. Are you tracking who she referred and who she, they referred and who they referred? This was in 1997. We're 21 years later. Are you even paying attention to the people that are right in front of you? So this, to me, is the most valuable thing that as agents we can do. If we did this, we would eliminate people like Zillow and Realtor.com and a lot of these agencies that are charging us thousands and thousands of dollars to sell us back our same information. We have the clients in front of us. And when people are worried about technology, I will tell you that I don't care how good technology gets. When that client is freaking out at 9 o'clock the night before signing and not sure what to do and how to do it, they need you. They need you to get on the phone and say, you know what, it's all good. It's going to be okay. We're going to work it out. Everything is figure outable. We're going to help you sort this out and get you into the home that you've been dreaming about. We're here for you. That's what we as realtors are amazing at. And they can't take that away from us. They can't take away me looking at your face and saying, it's all right, pat on the back. Let me help you sort this out. We get those divorce situations and we're helping mediate. There's attorneys too, but the attorneys are not dealing with the emotional aspect that we deal with in real estate. That's where you guys are amazing. They can't take that away from you no matter what. I don't care what technology. They even have what now? Artificial intelligence. Many of you guys like message something and they're like answering you back in seconds. You're like, wow, they're pretty responsive. Then you start to figure out, oh, it's a computer. And as soon as you figure out it's a computer, like, ah, I don't really want to talk about that. You want to actually talk to a human being. We want to connect with somebody. We want someone to help us through that situation. Sure, we could go figure it out ourselves. I don't know about you, but when I'm frustrated, the last thing I want to do is get put on hold that says, well, but you could go to our website and figure it out. If I wanted to figure it out on the website, I wouldn't be on the phone, (laughs) right? We just want somebody to pick it up and say, hey, I got you. I can help you. I can figure it out. That's where we are amazing. So I encourage all of you guys today, especially those who raised your hand. Remember, I told you I'm tracking you. Get your database set up today. Do what you can to get out there and start building those relationships and connecting with those people. Make it your goal today to reach out to 10 people. You know, there's a funny thing. When my kids were little, I remember somebody giving me some amazing advice. And they said, all a child wants when they walk into a room is to see your eyes light up. They walk in, they just want to see your eyes light up. They want to know that they're appreciated and that they're loved. And that's all every human being wants, don't they? So as you guys are wandering around here the next couple days, I encourage you to look up from your phone. Get people's names. Look them in the eye. Get to know who they are. You're like, why? They're all realtors. I'm not going to get any business from them. Not true, is it? So I encourage you to take the time to set things aside. Look at people. Let them know that you care and that you acknowledge them and who they are. 
And I encourage you even more so to go back to your database. Go through those. And people are like, well, but I haven't talked to him in five years. I'm embarrassed. Anybody have that? I'm afraid. I'm uncomfortable. I promise you when you call and you say, oh, my gosh, I'm so sorry. I have not called you in years. I just want to apologize for not staying in contact with you. But my goal is to change that. And I just wanted to call and say hi and see how things are. Who's going to say, oh, I don't want to talk to you, click. (laughs) If they do, you don't want to talk to them anyway. Most people are going to say, oh, my goodness, you know what? I'm sorry, too. I haven't reached out to you. That's what we need more of on this planet right now. We need more of those connections. So that's my challenge to you. Get out there. Talk to your people in your database. Tell them what you need. Connect with them. See how you can help them. Right? Like we need to have more ways that we can help people. And you have that ability. Famous saying, you all know it, you help enough other people get what they want and you'll get everything you want. But we get in our little huddle and we forget about all that. So if you guys want these slides, and this is actually an ebook that I've put together on how to hold outstanding client events, you guys can simply go to marguerite.crispillo.com Florida. And you can download that free ebook. And there's information in there that you can get. So just go. I know my name is 19 letters long. I apologize for that. It's my husband's fault. He's back there. <laughs> no, actually, my maiden name was Scuncio. How about that? That any better? Right. Marguerite Crispillo. The good news is people remember my name, right? So you can go to marguerite.crispillo.com Florida. And you can download a free copy of this ebook. Everyone got a picture there? Awesome. And on top of that, I have a free Facebook group. I'm sorry, I can come back. There you go. Hurry up. (laughs) And you can also go to, I have a free Facebook group called Real Estate Success Strategies and Accountability. I don't sell anything in there. It's just a group to engage and ask questions and get help and support. And I also have a podcast that I have a ton of fun with called Real Estate Real World. I've interviewed a lot of really cool people. I'm sorry, what? Go back one? All right, hold on. There you go. Everyone got your pictures? And the last one is my podcast. You can go check it out. I've done about 100 podcasts with all different types of people, and I'm actually starting to re-record my newest season, so there'll be some new episodes up there. Um, and this is ways to get a hold of me on social media. And there you go. All right, any questions before we wrap up? We got done a little early. Yes. I do snail mail and email because, you guys, I'm here to tell you, especially with the younger generation, less than 10% of emails are even getting read. People don't read emails anymore. I do both. I snail mail the same letter and I email the same letter. Yes. Yes. Because most people don't read their email, but they'll read their snail mail and vice versa. Thank you guys very much. I know we got done a little early. The gal did not. Oh, there she is. I'm sorry. (laughs) 